And finally tonight, a new book examines the events of March 25th, 1971, and why it was so significant for the church in Europe. The book is called Christ, the Hope of Europe, and it is written by Andrea Galliaducci, the Vatican correspondent for Catholic News Agency. The book tells the story of the Council of Episcopal Conferences of Europe, but also looks to the future of the continent. Joining us now from Rome is Andrea Galliaducci, Vatican analyst at Catholic News Agency. Andrea, good to see you. So tell us, how did this idea for the book come about? Well, the idea for the book come, came from uh, an anniversary, because this year is the 50th anniversary of the Council for, European, for the European Bishops' Conferences. The Council gathers 33 European Bishops' Conferences from all across Europe, which means from Portugal to Russia. It's not European Union, it's Europe in geographical sense. And so there are 39 bishops, because you add to that some bishops from uh, smaller territories. Uh, and it was important to track down the history of this organization, which made a lot in Europe during these years, and had also a role in the falling of the Iron Curtain, I would say. Yeah, and can you tell us um, what is the mission of the Council of European Bishops' Conferences? Well, their mission is to um, meet together and find together pastoral ways, uh, common pastoral ways, to bring Christ all over Europe. It's a mission of evangelization. It's, I would say, a synodal path. Uh, it's so fashion today, but it happened very much back in the 70s when they were born. And it came out uh, from meetings among bishops, European bishops, at the Second Vatican Council. And they kept this mission to gather together and find new ways to proclaim Christ to Europe just looking at the challenges. So that's, it's, that's why it's important. It's not a political body. It, it does not deal with politics. It mostly deals with pastoral ways. But this way, it also helps politics to be more Catholic. And I know uh, on the cover of the book, there is an image of Strasbourg Cathedral. Uh, tell us, why did you choose that image specifically? The Strasbourg Cathedral is particularly important for the European Union and for the European bishops. In Strasbourg, there was uh, uh, the third ecumenical assembly that led to a declaration, uh, ecumenical declaration of the churches all across Europe. That is a huge declaration of unity. The ecumenical path started 50, 50 years ago. And uh, Strasbourg is a place that is at the crossroads of Europe. It's German and French at the same time. And the cathedral has 1,000 years. And it says uh, the presence of the church here in Europe uh, from, from forever, I would say. Uh, everybody thinks about the cathedral in Europe. But if you think about cathedral, people wanted cathedral. People collected money to have the cathedrals. And that's why it's so important that you have this huge cathedral. And it's the same cathedral where Schumann, that now has been declared, declared venerable, used to pray when he thought about the project of the European Union. And Andrea, I'm curious, when you were in the process of writing the book, uh, is there anything specifically that stood out to you? And also, uh, what did Pope Francis say when he saw the book? Well, I gave the book to Pope Francis on our way to Budapest. I was in the papal flight for EWTN, and Pope Francis was uh, particularly interested in that. And uh, uh, he said, that's an important story uh, to, to, to tell about. Uh, what I thought about uh, when, when I was writing the book is that we need to get back to our roots. Uh, because, you know, we always think that church starts from the scratch. But actually, the church did a lot, did very much. And in Europe, they were prophetic. And that's something we need to know to go forward and to do more things in the future. Well, Andrea, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on the book. That is so wonderful. Andrea Galliaducci, Vatican Analyst at Catholic News Agency. Thank you again. Thank you.